this chapter is about estimating the value of a parameter using confidence intervals. Okay. Now, if you recall what a parameter is, it's a numerical summary on the population, right? Um, the ones that we're going to talk about in this chapter are the following. We have the mean. Okay. That's mu. We also have a proportion, which is what this section is about. That's a lowercase p. And we have the standard deviation, lowercase sigma. Okay. Now, typically, these numbers or these values are not known because we don't have access to all the population data. So instead, we take samples and we calculate statistics from them. Okay. And that's how we estimate these values, right? So we can calculate a single va estimate value, and we'll call that a point estimate for each one of these. Um, but what we're really interested in is coming up with some sort of range of values, some sort of interval of values. And we want some sort of degree of confidence in um, whether these parameters are within that interval. Okay. So this first section, we're going to tackle the proportion first. And then the next section will be the mean. And then the following would be the standard deviation. Okay, let's start with the point estimate here. A point estimate, again, is a single value that estimates the value of a parameter. So if we're talking about the point estimate for a population proportion, P, that's just going to be the sample proportion. Again, that's read as P hat. P hat is X over N. N is your sample size. And then X is the number of individuals in the sample with a specified characteristic, depending on what the, the context of the problem is. All right, so let's start with the first example. It says, the Pew Research Center conducted a survey of 1,007 adults and found that 856 of them know what Twitter is. What's the best point estimate of P? Well, yeah. the best point estimate of P is P hat, which is X over N. In this case, the survey was of 1,000 seven people that's our sample size and those who found have the characteristic that we're looking for in this case those who recognize what twitter is is 856. All right, and that's about 85 percent so 85 percent of this sample recognizes what twitter is now if you were to conduct the same exact survey for a different set of 1007 people do you expect there to be exactly 500 i'm sorry exactly 856 of them that knows what Twitter is? No, probably not, right? I mean, it can happen, but not likely, right? But it might be somewhere around there, like 860 or 850 or 840, 870. It, it can vary from sample to sample, right? And as we discussed in the previous chapter about sampling distributions, P hat does change from sample to sample. It might not be 85% like we see here. It might be like 87% or 84% or 83%. So again, this value will vary. And if it varies, it's a random variable. Therefore, it has a distribution, a probability distribution associated with it. Okay. So that's why we're going to talk about a range of values instead of just a particular value. And that's our, that's our confidence interval that we're talking about. So before we get into that, we need to also know what the level of confidence is. Okay. Level of confidence represents the expected proportion of intervals that will contain that parameter if a large number of different samples are obtained. Okay. Uh, so for example, if 95%, 95% level of confidence implies that if a hundred different confidence intervals are constructed, each based on different sample from the same population, we will expect that 95 of those intervals will contain the parameter and five will exclude it. Okay. All right. Now, this looks kind of complicated here. It's actually very simple. If you have something like 95% to figure out what that alpha is, that's a lowercase uh, Greek letter, alpha. Um, it's just the complement of the confidence level. So if it's 95% confidence level, the complement is 5% and a decimal is 0.05. It's actually not a very hard concept to deal with. All right. Confidence interval estimates. Okay. Again, an interval is a range of values. Okay. So it's going to be calculated for the population proportion with the point estimate 
plus or minus some sort of margin of error. The point estimate in our case will be p hat, that's our best single value estimate of the population proportion, and the margin of error, for now I'm just gonna call that uh, capital E. All right, now this margin of error of a confidence interval estimate of a parameter depends on three factors, and those are the level of confidence. So in the problem, it'll specify some of the most confident, uh, some of the most commonly used confidence levels are 90%, 95%, or 99%. Okay, again, the alpha and that corresponds to each one of these are the complements of this, right? The complement of 90% is 10%, which is that guy. Complement of 95% is 5%, which is that guy. And the complement of 99% is 0 0.01. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we also need to know the sample size, okay? And the standard deviation of our population. Okay, that's these three um, factors go into calculating this margin of error. Okay, now some of the more common confidence uh, levels for 90%, 95%, 99% have what's called a critical value, which is a value that cuts off the normal distribution into essentially three sections, okay? So for example, let's, let's do this 90% example off to the side here. We have a bell-shaped curve, right? If you're using a standard normal, which has zero at the center, um, and we want the middle portion to be 90%, okay, that's what we mean by confidence interval. Okay, the middle portion is 90%. That means each tail is, well, what's left over? Well, 10%, right? And then half of 10% would be 5% in each tail, right? Does that make sense? Right. So this portion would be 5%, this would be 5%, the middle portion would be 90%, and those add up to be 100. Now, the value that actually cuts that off, this value right here, for this particular case is 1.645, okay? Again, that would be like a z-score. Uh, the one on the left-hand side is a negative 1.645, but because of the symmetry, uh, since we just have to know about one of them, and then that'll tell us the left-hand side. Now, what you probably noticed in that previous problem was that there's a little weird notation for the critical value. There's a z with the little alpha over two as a subscript, okay? Now let's just define what that is. So it's not something that you've actually seen before in that notation, but it's something that we've dealt with before, okay? So this notation here, Z with the little number on the subscript, is pronounced Z sub alpha. Is a Z score such that the area under the standard normal to the right is alpha, okay? So in our, um, and how to find, how do you find these values, well, you're going to use inverse normal, just like we did in previous chapters, okay? And the area to the right is alpha. That means the area to the left is 1 minus alpha. Okay, so let's do two examples here. All right, so we're looking for this z-score, okay? Let's go ahead and draw a bell-shaped curve. We have a zero at the center. And we're looking for a value that cuts off the upper 35% and the bottom 65%, right? If they add up to be one, right? So that value should be, well, zero splits it off into 50-50, right? So this value should be somewhere around here, right? Where the upper portion is 0.35, that seems about right. And then the rest, the remaining portion to the left would be 65%. Again, they're complementary of each other. And this, this is Z point five that's just a notation and that's calculated using inverse normal you have your left area um, this is since this is a standard normal it's just gonna be zero one for these other ones but it's typically mean standard deviation right they're gonna be zero one the area to the left in this case well it's 0.65 if you were to calculate that, you would get 0.39. So that number right there is 0.39. And that does make sense that it's positive because it's to the right of zero. All right, let's do the same thing for this one here. 
All right, let's draw a bell-shaped curve here. Zero at the center. Again, we're looking for a value that cuts off the top 68%. Okay, so again, zero would cut off essentially 50%, right? Uh, we want the area to the right to be 68%. So that means if I move to the left here, this remaining portion would be 68%. And whatever is left over, 1 minus 0.68, what's that going to be? What, 32.32? Okay. Again, this value here is Z.68. And that's calculated using inverse normal. You have the left area, you have your mean and your standard deviation. Again, for, since we're doing standard normal, that's 0, 1. Area to the left in this case is that 0.32. Okay, if you put that in your calculator, you'll get something that's negative, which is expected because it's to the left of 0, 0.47, negative 0.47. Now, if you were to do this exact same exercise for all the, uh, for like the 90% confidence intervals and all that, then you'll actually get exactly what we have in the table up here. And I'll show you how to do that step by step. All right, so first of all, the confidence interval, uh, that represents the middle 90%, right? And what's left over? Well, 10%. So our alpha is going to be 10%. Or 0.10, right? And then since we only really want to figure out what the area in one tail is, right? Because that's going to help us figure out what the cutoff is. Uh, we just need half of 10%, which in our case is 0 0.05. Okay, and let's do that for all these. Uh, the complement of 95% is 5%, and half of 5% is 2.5%, right? Or 0 0.025. The complement of 99% is 0 0.01. Half of 0 0.01 is 0 0.005. Okay. Now that's the area to the right, essentially, right? And to figure out what the area to the left is, we just do 1 minus this. 1 minus 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.95. 1 minus 0 0.025 gives us 0. 975, 1 minus 0.005 gives us 0.995. Okay. Now, if we want to figure out what that critical value is, that which separates the the left half side and the right half side, you would have to use inverse normal, right? And the inverse normal requires us to use the left area, right, which is this one. So in this case, it'll be 0.95. Uh, let me actually use the notation here, just to be very consistent. Z alpha over two, which would be 0 0.05, right? That's what that is. Will be inverse normal. Area to the left is 0 0.95, 0, 0.1. This one comes out to be 1.645. This is a very common number that shows up. And that's why we're doing these. Uh, Z, this um, subscript is 0 0.025. That's the area to the right. So the area to the left is 0 0.975. The area to the left is 0 0.975. Zero 0.01. This value comes out to be almost two standard deviations, 1.960. And then this one here, 0 0.005. That's the area to the right. So the area to the left would be 0 0.99501. And this value comes out to be 2.576. Okay, why did we come up with these numbers? Because these are used pretty often, just because these confidence levels are asked to for pretty often, okay? We'll refer back to this table in a couple uh, examples from now. All right, so now we need to actually construct a confidence interval for a population proportion. Now, a population proportion 
only follows a normal distribution under certain conditions. And that is if you have n times p hat minus times 1 minus p hat is greater than 10. Okay. That's typically the case. As long as your n is pretty large, you can typically achieve this. Um, you only have problems when you have either your n is too small or your p hat is too close to 0 or it's too close to 1. You might have some issues here. But other than that, you almost always get it to be approximately normal. Okay. All right, so confidence intervals. Well, your confidence interval for P, for P, well, there's always gonna be some sort of lower bound and some upper bound, okay? That lower bound consists of a point estimate, a single value estimate for your best guess at what P is, minus the margin of error, and also that same point estimate, but plus the margin of error, okay? So here we still have P at the center. Again, we don't know that value, but we we're saying that it's somewhere between these two lower bounds and upper bounds. Okay. Again, your point estimate, your best point estimate for P hat, for P is P hat. That's what that is. The margin of error here is this whole ugly thing. Okay. Now, what this really is is this is the standard deviation, the square root portion of P hat, and the z is just the number of standard deviations. Okay. So same thing on the right hand side, your point estimate is this guy and your margin of error is this whole thing. Okay. So that margin of error is what we'll call just E just to be, to be able to write this pretty quickly. Okay. So in a concise version of this, it's just going to be that where that whole square root times the Z is just your E. Okay. All right. Now, there's a lot of inputs in here, and we're going to be able to calculate this confidence interval. The goal is to get a lower bound and an upper bound. And once we do that the long way, which we'll do once, we're going to be able to use a calculator. Because we'll see that we only have a few inputs that we can just punch into our calculator and do all this work for us. Okay. But it's good to understand where this stuff comes from before you start uh, using a calculator without understanding it. All right. Now, once we get a lower bound and an upper bound, we want to... Um, essentially interpret this in the context of the question. So we always start, this is the template for answering your question. So we say we are whatever confidence level percentage confident that the population proportion of and then the context of the problem will tell us what we're talking about will lie between our lower bound which is what we calculate at the end and our upper bound percent. Okay so Let's do an example. In 2015, a poll asked 1,140 registered voters nationwide whether they were concerned about climate change. 752 answered concerned about climate change. Obtain a 95% confidence interval for the proportion okay, of registered voters nationwide who are concerned about climate change. Okay, so they're asking for a confidence interval and I'd specifically underline proportion because once you're actually doing this on an exam, they might be asking for a confidence interval on the proportion, on a mean, on a standard deviation. So you have to be able to identify what we're talking about. Okay. Again, we're in the section of proportion, so obviously we are dealing with uh, confidence intervals for proportions. All right. So our confidence interval for a proportion is, well, our population proportion is bounded between some lower bound and some upper bound. Okay. And those lower bound is your best estimate at the P, which is P hat minus the margin of error, and the upper bound is p hat plus the margin of error. Okay. Now let's figure out what your p hat is. Well, p hat is just x over n, n being our sample size of what, 1,040. And those who were concerned about climate change is what we're looking for, right? Um, 752 of them were concerned about climate change. And if we were to just kind of Estimate this is round to two decimal places. I get 0.66. All right, so so far we have that p hat, which is 0 0.66. 0 0.66. And then we just have to add and subtract the margin of error. Okay, so we need the margin of error. Well, the margin of error, the formula for that from the previous page is 
your critical value, Z alpha sub alpha over two, times the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n. Okay. Now the Z uh, alpha over two, well that value is something that we just look up. Let me actually just kind of write that down over here. Z alpha over two corresponds to look up critical value for a 95% confidence level, for 95% confidence level. And if you were to look that up on the table before, let's go back up here. Um, for 95, we have a confidence, uh, a critical value of 1.960, okay? So that's why I said those are the most common uh, critical values that we deal with. 1.960. Okay, so we're going to use that up here. 1.960. Then we have the square root p hat, which we found up there. Uh, typically, I, I don't use rounded numbers because then it'll just kind of make your whole it, all the errors start to compound. The more the earlier that you round in the problem, but in this case, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do that here. Uh, One minus 0.66 all over n being 1140 and we're going to get if we were to calculate this in our calculator we get something like 0 0.03 so the margin of error is about three percent okay so we have 0 0.03 here 0 0.03 here and if you subtract those and add those 0 0.66 minus 0 0.03 gives us 0 0.63 0.66 times plus 0 0.03 gives us 0 0.69. That's our confidence interval for uh, the population proportion. Now our best guess at the population proportion was 0.66, right? But what we say is that we are what 95% confident that it's between 63% and 69%. So let's go ahead and use that template that we have from the previous page to, let me see if I can get it all in the same window, yeah. So we can say that we are confidence level percentage, in our case 95% confident that the population proportion of, and then the context of the problem, of what, uh, voters Concerned about climate change. Let's say that voters concerned about climate change will lie between our lower bound percentage and our upper bound percentage. All right, sixty-three. 63 as a percentage, that's 63%, percent. 0.63 is a percentage points, 63%, and 69%. So we're 95% confident that the population proportion of voters who are concerned with climate change is somewhere between 63% and 69%, okay? Now, could it be outside of that range? Well, yeah, there's a 5% chance because we are 95% confident that it's between those two values, but there's a 5% chance that it's somewhere outside of that range. Okay, now this is the way that you would do it if you're to do it by hand, right? Um, I did mention something about a calculator, right? Well, let's see. What were the inputs for our lower bound and our upper bound? Well, our inputs were the p hat and the margin of error, right? And when we go over to the p hat formula, well, that is just contains x and n. So we need to know what x and n are, right? So we need to know what x is. We need to know what n is, okay? Uh, for the margin of error, however, we need to know what the z alpha over 2 is. And that's just g given to us by looking up the, uh, the confidence level, right? So we need to know what the confidence level is. And then also the p hat, well, that's just x over n. p hat x over n. And then the n again is what we already know. So there's only really three things that we need to know. The x, the n, and your confidence level.
Okay. So in our case, the X was five, 752 and was 1,140. Confidence level was 95% or is a 0.95. And let's look up the function in our calculator. Okay, so using a TI calculator, I'll switch over to the calculator in just a bit. We're going to look for a function that's called one proportion z interval int. One prop z int. There's one that's called one prop z test. That's going to be for the next chapter. Uh, we're going to look for something that's called pro one prop z int. So let's switch over to the calculator. So if we clear out the home screen, let's go over to stat, go to test. We haven't explored this menu yet, so this is our first time using this menu. Now we're gonna eventually use almost every single function in this menu, okay? So we're gonna look for something called one prop z interval. Again, I do see one prop z test. That's not the one we want. We wanna go down one prop z interval. It's that one. There's also a two prop z interval. That'll be, that'll be later on. Okay, so I already had these numbers in there. 752, 1140, confidence level 0.95. You have to make sure that you put that in as a decimal. Also, some other common mistakes is sometimes people get the X and the N backwards. Just remember your X can never be greater than your N. Okay, you can't have more people that are in favor of climate change than your sample size, right? It has to be less than that, at least. Okay, and let's go over to calculate, press enter, and we get a, at the very top we say 0.63214. If you round that to two decimal places, isn't that 0.63 over here? And then 0.687, if you round that up to two decimal places, that's 0.69. So you get the same exact confidence interval. Okay, uh, that next thing, the p hat, that just gives you the estimate for our point estimate, p hat, which we, we uh, rounded to two decimal places we get 0.66 and then I'm not sure why they spit out the uh, the sample size again that was one of the inputs okay all right let's go on to another one all right next example in 2008 a poll asked 1783 registered voters nationwide whether they were favored or opposed the death penalty for persons convicted of murder 1123 were in favor obtaining 90 percent confidence interval for the proportion of registered voters nationwide who are in favor of death penalty for convicted murderers. Okay, persons convicted of murder. All right, again, we're looking for a confidence interval for a proportion. So we have a lower bound and some sort of upper bound. Now we, that we know how to use the calculator, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, let's figure out what your X is. So we use one prop Z interval. We have our X, we have our N, confidence level. Um, your sample size is 1,783. Those who were in favor of, because that's what we're looking for, those who are in favor are 1,123. Confidence level, 90%, so 0 0.90. And if we were to run that through one prop Z interval, just like we did in the previous problem, I'm not going to go through that exercise again, um, we will get... If we round to two decimal places, we get a 0.61 and 0.65. Okay, so again, these are proportions. So if we were to interpret this, we say we are 90% confident that the population proportion of voters in favor of the death penalty uh, specifically for those convicted of murder uh, for persons convicted of murder lies between 61% uh, our lower bound and 65% so we believe that those who are in favor of 
death penalty for persons convicted of murder is between 61% and 65%. We have a 90% confidence of that. Yeah. Can we be wrong about that? Yeah, there's about a 10% chance of that. That's outside of that range. Okay, let's do another one. One more of these. A drug Lipitor is meant to lower cholesterol levels. In a clinical trial of 863 patients who received 10 milligram doses of Lipitor daily, 47 reported a headache as a side effect, obtained a 99% confidence interval of the proportion of patients who reported a headache. Again, we have a lower bound and an upper bound. Okay. Again, we're going to use one prop Z interval. The inputs are X, N, confidence level. The confidence level is 0.99. Uh, what was your actual sample size? Yeah, 863. And those who reported a headache were 47. Okay. If we run that through one prop Z interval again, just like before, our lower bound would actually be something like um, about 3%, 0 0.03. And our upper bound would be about 0 0.07. Okay, so yeah, only 47 out of one, 863 patients reported a headache. So that's anywhere between 3 and 7% that we are, what? We are 99% confident. So pretty high confidence that those who will report a headache will be between 3% and 7%. So we are 99% confident that the population proportion of patients right, that's the context of the, of the problem patients who report a headache is between or lies between 3% and 7% This next section is deals with, well, what if we already have a confidence interval somehow? We already have the lower bound and we have the upper bound. Then there should be some sort of way to back into the p hat and your your uh, margin of error, right? Because this is your lower bound, lower bound here, and this is your upper bound. Okay, let's draw a number line off to the left here. We have a lower bound here and we have our upper bound. At the center of our interval is actually our best estimate, which is p hat, okay? Um, and then we add on the margin of error. So if we add on the margin of error to p hat, we have p hat plus e, which is our lower, our upper bound, sorry. And if we subtract off the margin of error, we have p hat minus e, okay? So if we're looking for p hat, well, isn't that just the center of this interval here? And how do you find the very center point here or the mid range? Because this is the range, right? The mid range of that is, well, you add the upper bound plus your lower bound and divide by two, okay? Now, what if I'm looking for the margin of error? Well, the margin of error is only half this range, okay? The margin of error is just from here to here, right? Margin of error from here to here, okay? It's only half that range. Well. If we take that range, which is by subtracting the upper bound minus the lower bound, and then split it in half, that will give you the margin of error. Okay, let's try that with an example. So in this case, they're already giving us a lower bound and an upper bound. So that's your lower bound, that's your upper bound. They're asking us to find p hat and e. All right, again, p hat is just the very center of this interval. So p hat is just upper bound plus lower bound, or you can re rearrange that, lower bound plus upper bound, doesn't matter, because we're adding. And that'll be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.5, divide that by two. 0 0.9 plus 0 0.5 is 1.4, divided by two is 0.7. So that is our p hat sample proportion. And then our margin of error is just the difference between our upper bound and our lower bound, right? That gives us the range and we want to divide that range in half. So point 0.9 minus 0.5 divided by two 
which is 0 0.9 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.4, divide that in half, and that gives us 0.2. Okay. Let's actually double check to see if that actually fits our equation, because we know that P, the population proportion, is bounded between our lower bound and our upper bound, right? Which in this case is P hat minus the margin of error and P hat plus the margin of error. And, let's, and since we know those values, let's go ahead and plug those in. We just found that P hat, let me just label this as we're checking, P hat is 0.7, right? Our margin of error is 0.2. Again, same values, P hat, 0.7, plus the margin of error, 0.2. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract. 0.7 minus 0.2, we get 0 0.5. 0 0.7 plus 0.2, we get 0 0.9 which is exactly the same as that. So yeah, it checks out. All right, the last part of this section has to do with how to actually come up with the sample size necessary for estimating the population proportion uh, within a specified margin of error. So this is stuff that's done prior to actually taking a study, okay? So how to find that minimum sample size required? Okay, well, done by using this formula. Now where does this formula come from? It looks like it's just like a magical formula that came out of nowhere. Um, we've actually seen it already, but just not in this form. If we go back up a couple sheets, where well, we actually first talked about the margin of error. Let's go over here. What was that? Oh, right here. That equation that I just started right now. That equation. If I solve this equation for n, you'll get the equation that we just saw. Okay, so let's just go back to that. If you used a little bit of algebra to solve for that, you would get that. Okay. Now, if you look at this very carefully, you might actually discover that this isn't actually solved for n. Okay. Not really. Okay. Because p hat contains an n. So there's still an n on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay. So you might be asking, well, then how can we solve for n correctly? Well, the thing is we actually haven't calculated p hat. So we can't, because we haven't even gotten a sample, because we haven't even done the survey yet. All right. So where's this p hat coming from? Okay. So it's not the x over n. That's only after we've actually conducted a survey. The p hat actually comes from some sort of prior estimate from some prior study. Okay, um, why is this? Why do we use a prior estimate? Um, if there is a prior study already done, and we're trying to come up with another study, then this is just going to help us come up with maybe a, a smaller sample size necessary to to conduct this. Now, if there wasn't any prior study to deal with, then what ends up happening is. Um, well, we'll maximize that formula would be a p hat of 0.5. And if you put 0.5 into this formula here and here, you get 0.5 times 0.5. Half of a half is a quarter. And that's how you, you just replace that with 0 0.025. But the, rem the rest of the formula is exactly the same. Okay. So that's if there's no prior estimate. Okay. So if you had no prior study and you're just doing this survey from a fresh start, then you would use this example, this uh, formula here. So let's just show you how this is done um, with a problem. Now, one, one thing you want to look out for is, now this comes from the confidence level, right? We're just gonna look that up. And then this is the margin of error. In the problem, the way that they actually give you the margin of error, it's usually you have to look for the word within. Okay, so look for that one. And when we calculate this at the very end, we're always gonna have to round up to the next whole number. Okay, we never round down. All right, let's do this example. It says, if you wanted to estimate the proportion of registered voters nationwide who are concerned about climate change, how many people need to be polled so that we are within 2%, there's that word within, of the true proportion with a 99% confidence? Okay, how many people is needed to be pulled. Okay, so that's how I know that we're dealing with sample size. We're looking for how many people to actually pull before we actually conduct this survey. So in this first 
part, part A, we do have some sort of prior estimate from a poll done on this from example three, and that is that p hat equals 0.66. So let's use that formula. It's the p hat times one minus p hat times z alpha over two over our margin of error. And the most common thing to miss is this squared here. So don't forget that. All right, let's just catalog what we know so far. Do we know what p hat is? Yep, they told us it's 0.66. Do we know that z alpha over two? Well, that comes from the confidence level, right? Confidence level of, what do we have a confidence level? 99%. If we look that up from the table, two sheets down, uh, that comes out to be 2.576, okay? And then the margin of error, in this case, since we're talking about proportions, are they always going to give you a margin of error that is a percentage or some sort of proportion? <clears throat> the margin of error here is 0 0.02. All right, now it's just a simple matter of putting this into our calculator. So we have 0.66, 1 minus 0.66, or 0.34. I'll just write it in like that. And then we have a fraction. Uh, this critical value is something that we looked up. So we look it up, 2.576, margin of error is 0 0.02, and don't forget to square this, a very common mistake that people make. If you calculate this, put this in your calculator, um, you would get something like 3,722.67. Now we always round up, always round up. So the next integer, so we need to survey 3,722.67, but we can't get 0.67 of a person, so you just have to go a little bit up. So 3,723. Okay, so <clears throat> 3,723. Now, if there was no prior estimate, then the minimum sample size that we need to survey, it actually won't be... Uh, 3,723, it would actually be higher, okay, because that's actually going to maximize the minimum um, number of people that are required to survey. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate that. Now, with no prior estimate, we don't know what p hat is, so we replace that p hat times 1 minus p hat with just 0.25. That whole thing is replaced by that. But the remaining portions are exactly the same. We have our critical value, the margin of error, don't forget the square. And critical value is the same as before, 2.576, margin of error, 0 0.02. Again, don't forget the square. <coughs> what do we get here? Well, I get something like 4,147.36. All right, now normally we would round this and we would have to round down, right, to 1,147. But in this problem, we're always round up because we're talking about people. And in order to ensure that we're meeting all the criteria, um, that being that we're within 2% and it's a 99% confidence interval, it's just, it doesn't hurt to add another person. So round up to 4,148. Okay, always round up. 